you've reached your limit on talking. Shut the fuck up. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Gig Economy Podcast episode. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, episode. Oh, shit. I know. I always forget. Oh, 209? 209. 209. I don't put it in the... I said that every week. I don't put it. 209. So we're, we're cranking through these 200s and uh, appreciate y'all uh, joining the show tonight. We just had a fantastic interview with, I would say, I'm comfortable saying a viral TikTok star. She is definitely a viral TikTok star with great energy. She has some great saying, one-liner saying <laughs> that she does. Her energy is fantastic, and uh, it's a good interview. Be sure and check it out. I finally, out. Larry and I aren't as witty. She had some great one-liners. I cannot wait to pull those clips. So yes. that will come out uh, to the Patreon peeps first, the video and audio, and then it will be released to the masses at some point in time. When so you need to join the Patreon so yeah. you can hear this interview. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash the gig econ podcast uh, or just search the gig economy podcast. You can join five or $10 tier. We appreciate all the support. Uh, and our supporters currently are Samson and Bud and Frank and Stephen Omar and Delivery Cats and Jamie and Tom and Jim and Miguel. We guys, we thank what? already did some talking tonight. Uh, we can't thank you enough. Go to GigEconomyShow.com for everything Gig Economy Show related. You can sign up the newsletter that I don't do. That I need to get back doing. Uh, and then we have a Telegram group, which, uh, man, we should get Linda in there, man. We, we definitely need to get Linda I in mean, there. I'm telling you, man, like, you know, it's lonely in the gig economy, you know, and we always complain that there's not enough message in there, but Linda will fill that shit up. I will text her and try to try to send her a link. To, send her a yeah, link. Yeah, she she can talk. She can. She's got, as she tells you, she's got lots of stories, and uh, she's definitely a talker. But it's good. She tells good stories. She's uh, interesting. And uh, all right, tell us about the Telegram. I, if you want to hear Linda when we get her into the Telegram group, you need to join the Telegram group. And it's a uh, it's a messaging app. It's kind of uh, like a text, but you can send. Um, written messages or you can also do voice messages which is really good when you're out driving um it's gig workers from all over the country uh, all over the world we have people um in chicago and philly over in new zealand kentucky uh north carolina just all over the place but we get in there and you can talk about gig work or you can talk about anything at all we shoot the shit in there sometimes we vent in there we uh, get to know each other and uh, after you talk into telegram you'll figure out hey i need to go to the picnic i want to go to the gig economy picnic yeah for sure and that is september 14th from 2 to 4 p.m at riverside park uh larry freaking remind me to create a facebook event i keep forgetting to do that okay. um but hopefully we both together our powers together can uh remember that but yeah september 14th in grand Rapids, michigan from 2 to 4 p.m uh hey bubba sue hey traveler thanks for joining hey uh i think it's tyler uh tyler yeah for sure thanks for joining uh we have more right now than we did the entire show last week it was weird i heard somebody saying the same thing they were live streaming i would listen to a podcast i listened to their yeah. audio version mm -hmm. and they're like yeah there's like one person in here i have no idea it what's was going on. weird it was like a ghost town <laughs> so <laughs> strange know? so strange uh stories from the road larry actually does not have a story from the road or did I'm you not... think of one not really. I mean, it's, you know, um, school started back, so I'm getting to see my peeps again. My peeps. Um, uh, you know, get back. It's great. It's uh, nice to go out. I went out, I think it was Thursday. I can't remember if it was Thursday or Saturday. But, um, like, from the time I left until I got home at 3.45 in the morning, I went out about 8.30, got, got 8.30 p.m., came home 3.45 a.m. I never I never sat. Oh, never wow. Never my car to sit. Uh, so it was, it was definitely much busier than it has been over this summer, which I love. Uh, I love it when it's busy and I can yeah. keep busy. Yeah. Even if you're not making a shit ton, it's just night nice, like sitting around is for the, birds, yeah. man. if I got to sit around for 20 minutes before I get a ride, I'm going home. I'm yeah. not even going to fuck with it. Like I yeah. just can't do it. So exactly. Yeah. What's the point? 
A uh, couple of stories from me. Uh, as you see, uh, Jason got deactivated from Spark. If you join this to hear that, we clickbaited your ass. So here we go. Uh, this was a technical issue. I got a mass. Everyone got a mass. Like, hey, you've been deactivated, or or, or and I'm like, what? Or your appeal was denied. I was like, uh, excuse me, beg your pardon. So yeah, I got deactivated. Apparently, I don't know. I never went into the app, but it was obviously an error. I tell you what, man, Spark has more fucking errors on their end with their app. Like it's like. It's so bad, but no, I'm not. De- well, I actually don't know. I cannot confirm or deny <laughs> if I'm I'm actually deactivated. I <laughs> I did a few Spark early in the summer, maybe a little bit in May. Um, but um, yeah, so I was not. It was it was incorrect. So I hadn't done anything on that. And then I had like a random thought. So in fact, we're gonna play an Amazon video tonight. But what yeah. if? You know, people say the lack of service and deli- like we've seen some ratchet drivers, right? We've we've shown some. Oh yeah, yeah. Saw that guy driving on the greenway on the sidewalk. Yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> guy bumping into the garage. <laughs> yeah. So what? What if? Would you? My my question was my brain fart or whatever you want to say is like, would you be willing to tip your delivery driver if you if it gave you better service? Now. As I say that, I'm like, well, probably 90% of the service is probably fine, right? Like, I mean, like, yeah. would I, would I, would I tip a driver that, or a delivery driver that ever, you know, that put it down in front of my porch and it was fine? Um, I don't know. I just wondered if service would be better. Like, here is where it's not a, a bid for service, right? Cause we're already getting the package from Amazon. Mm-hmm. But do you think the drivers would? be more conscientious of you know not putting in front of the door so like i have to like walk through my garage to get it what do you think about that yeah i would hope so and i and you know i wish i could have tipped my delivery driver um last week i ordered uh you know i had to get my new phone for uh oh lift yeah even though even though it told me they're cutting me off on the 14th and my shit still works i wouldn't have done it i would have (laughs) waited well i haven't got i did get a phone we ended up sending it back but anyway my phone got delivered phone case and uh, screen protector and stuff. They they set the package. It was on my porch, but it was on the very edge of the porch. And we had a really big rainstorm that day, soaking wet. All of them packages soaked through, soaked through. <laughs> I was like, "Is it really hard to two more steps to put it up?" So you know? <laughs> I am. I'm so okay. You're gonna fucking hate me when I say this. <laughs> I am kind of a lazy delivery driver, like. I mean, it, it, it's twofold. If I'm doing a morning one, I don't want to walk all the way up to your front door. Like I'd be, I'd, I'd fucking scream like Mickey Mouse if I'm like sitting in my PJs drinking coffee and I saw some random person come on my door at six in the morning. I just, mm-hmm. you know, it would, it would startle me. You know what I mean? I'm not sure. used to it. So that's one reason, but I'm, I'll be honest with you. I'm lazy. And that's what spurred the conversation. If I knew that I could get tipped, yeah. even if it was like I made $10 that on these 40 stops. Yeah. I think I would I think I would go above and beyond like you just had the rain. I think I would have brought it all the way up there. Yeah, especially because, I mean, it, it wasn't like we had a shower pop up out of nowhere. You know, they've been calling for storms that day. They knew yeah. it was going to rain. And they said it, like I said, on the very I'm like the very edge of the porch. You couldn't uh, yeah. get any further. It would have fallen off. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, that would be interesting. I think I think a lot of people would be like you if there was a chance they could get tipped. I think they're that would be an incentive for some people. Yeah, for sure. Bubba Sue says, I thought you can tip Amazon drivers. So there's two different things. You can do the whole foods. Like if you're getting like grocery orders from whole foods, that's always tippable. But when you're doing the dot com orders, which they call it like from the warehouse where you're delivering people's packages. Yeah. You can't get tipped. Now they did. Amazon did a couple of things where, uh, you know, it was tip your driver and then driver would get five bucks, but that was paid from Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Uh, but I sure. mean, I, I don't know. See, here's the thing. Like with UPS, you have a loyal driver in that route. Once they're in that route, like you learn, mm-hmm. like if you, like if we, if I ship something every day, I would get to know my driver. He would deliver stuff. Like we'd be like, Hey man, how's your kids? Like, you know, I would definitely tip, but Amazon, it's so fucking random though. That's the thing. Yeah. There's no like loyalty to your area. I mean, I've seen, I bet I've seen a hundred different people Oh yeah. Not just flex, but DSP workers too. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, know? we. It seems like I don't. I don't ever remember seeing uh, somebody deliver to our house and thinking, "Oh, I've seen them before." Yeah, you know, delivering to our house. So that that is different because yeah, if if you're you see these people and you know uh, you know there's a good chance hey you're you're going to run into this person and talk with them at some point in the near future. You know, you might go a little a little further with your yeah. service. Well, yeah, I mean, everyone, everyone likes a little bit of loyalty. I mean, sure. I, you know, it's just, it's just kind of a thing. And I know there's a lot of turnover in Amazon and they are probably the lowest paid out of all of them. But I just thought, I don't know. I thought it might be a, a good idea. Like at least trial it. I mean, what's, what's the worst it can do by turning mm -hmm. it on? Like it's some coding. And if someone wants to do it, great. If not, yeah. Fuck yeah. it. No harm done. Yeah. I mean, no one's going to be pissed if you, you know, I still got my shit in like next day. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, now, if they start asking for money now, they, they do actually for some of my stuff, you have to order twenty five dollars if you want it like at four in the morning. Like I ordered something about an hour before the show. And they're like, mm -hmm. if you want it tomorrow morning at four a.m., it's two ninety nine or. Yeah, order. Too, yeah, we don't we don't we don't have that. It doesn't get here that. Quick. Oh, no, There's not no that quick. Yeah, there's no delivery. There's no uh, warehouse around here. I think the okay. closest one is probably Nashville. <laughs> oh, no way. There's got to be one closer <laughs> than that. There's no way it's going to be. I, I, no, that's true. I mean, maybe uh, not. But. I'd have to say, yeah. Well, anyways, if you if you ever see it come on Amazon, then you know it was here. Verbal trademark. So Right here. I'm sure no one else has Royalties. Ever. We want royalties. We'll only take 8%. Eight, no, I'll do 8.5. I'm not doing okay, 8. Eight, eight eight's a little low. Okay. All right, uh, real quick, our awesome sponsors, Matt from 616 Locksmith, 616-914-3487. You can call him if you get locked out of your house, locked out of your car. If your key is broke, if your fob is broke, he can program all that stuff. He can get you extra key. It's way cheaper than the dealership. Check him out. Matt was a gig worker way back in the day. I know his wife still does gig work, too, uh, from time to time, but uh, great guy, hard worker, doesn't fuck around. He gets shit done. So give him a call uh, if you need those services. And then, of course, uh, Levi, who I had to give shit because the other day he was like, you haven't really promoted you very well. I'm like, Levi, I've talked about you on every stream. So tip you in the app. Uh, check him out. Subscribe to it. Even though he doesn't love me, uh, go to his YouTube channel and uh, subscribe because he uh he is an incredible content creator i was just watching yes. some of his shorts um uh, mm -hmm. before we started streaming so good stuff uh gig economy in the news speaking of amazon drivers this is a video and you i mean i'm telling you if you want your package at four in the morning you need the initiative and the gumption from this driver so oh, yeah. the premise of this is uh he's driving on the road through a little like motorcycle brigade and uh and we'll watch it So first, first of all, fuck those motorcycle riders. I don't know why they do that. So I'm so let's backtrack. There was a police officer there, so that was weird. I'm like, and then I saw a little smoke or dust. I'm like, uh, it, was there an accident? But then when he got up there, there was no accident. So I, yeah. can you ex do, do you do you have any insight uh, on that? No, I was trying to figure out when the first time I watched this exactly what was going on and even read kind of some of the comments. And I I think it's pretty unclear what the whole situation was. You know, I, I don't understand these people that block the highways or try to block the interstates. Um, well, I mean, it happens in the local roads, too. You know, they yeah. if they get more than like six of them together, they feel like they have to stick together and they'll just go through the lights. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's so unsafe. And I, 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 as much as that Amazon guy probably shouldn't have done that because it looks like he may have clipped somebody in one of those. Yeah. Like I he, thought, man, did he hit that one? I, it sure looked like he, he, he hit him. <laughs> dollars to donuts. He got fired, but I love him. Like, you know what? Fuck you. Like we got, 
we got to I got to work. It's like the, the protesters that block people from going to work too. I'm like, what is that actually doing? This guy probably doesn't even know what you're protesting, probably doesn't hate you. Now he fucking hates you because he's just yeah. trying to get to the mill to make some food. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, exactly, I don't get yeah. it. I don't yeah, understand. It's it. weird. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. I don't understand why people do stuff like that. You're not accomplishing anything. You're just like I said, you're just pissing people off. And even if they didn't care one way or the other about your situation or what you know what you're protesting about, they sure do now. Yeah. <laughs> after, you, after you pissed them off. And to be frank, I'm not saying you shouldn't protest. I think it works. I think if everyone gets together, it works. But like, yeah. Let's okay. You got a little meaty on it, but if when I see that, I just get pissed off for the guy trying to go to work, and I don't give a fuck of what you're protesting about. Like I'm not, I'm not sympathetic anymore because you're being a dick. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, he says only thing clear is those motorcycles being d bags. Yes, yes, I agree. But man, the balls on that Amazon driver, and he wasn't being careful either. He was just like, "Fuck your shit." I gotta- yeah, and and they took off after him. It looked like about five or six of them took off after him. Yeah, but like, you I, wonder what happened down the road. <laughs> I want to know about those cops. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I want to know what, why the cops were there, what was going on. But anyways. Uh, I, I do not recommend doing what that driver did, but I appreciate, uh, the same attitude of like, yeah, we're going to deliver every package. We're not bringing anything back. So, yeah. Uh, some tip baiting going on. Shocker. Oh, surely not. Surely not. Yeah. This, uh, this story, I think that has a video on it too, doesn't it? Uh, Um, shit balls. I don't know if I pulled this. Yeah. If not, don't worry. Hold on. Let me see. Oh Yeah. Thank you. I did not write video. Appreciate you doing that. All right. You want me to play it first? Yeah, go ahead. We'll oh, by the way, this yeah. lady in here, that's the driver, was super nice about it. Like, I didn't watch the whole thing. I watched the first half. I'm like, I would have been a lot more pissed. But here we go. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Do you have the phone number to y'all's office? Uh, well, there's multiple people here. What do you, what's your so I just made a delivery here for Uber uh-huh. for Eric. Okay. And um, the, the order was $21. Uh-huh. So when I get here, he got the order eight minutes early. I shopped and did $153 worth of food, of snacks for you guys. And then Uber tells me, oh, by the way, they took away all this money and you only got paid $5 for this trip. So you didn't talk to Eric? I would like to, <laughs> but if not, then I just... I want to talk to a manager because there's no reason that they should have took my money away if unless you're bait tipping unless you're tip baiting like I don't know why you would do that. I don't think Eric's coming. I made a delivery here for twenty one dollars for a hundred and fifty dollar order with Target one hundred and forty three dollars and change five cases of water a whole bunch of bulk stuff and i just got a notification from uber that says oh by the way they reduced your tip and you only got five dollars and 59 cents they do this all the time they tip bait so that way people will take their orders so they can be cheap but this is a business dark parents operating facility and innovative services like why are you taking away money from hard-working people what y'all do. I understand what you're saying. I just, I haven't even touched my app since you guys left. So I don't even know what you're communicating, what you're saying. I don't. It, sure. I, I only see well, it in my I app. Haven't even, I haven't even done the rate, right? So I haven't done anything with it. So it's just. Interesting. Yeah. So you always wonder what the real story is because he said, like, he haven't even gone in to do the rating and uh, he, you know, said he had, didn't take the tip off. You got to wonder if, you know, Uber's just skimming <laughs> i mean that's the thing we're we're kind of something smells like liar we're kind of like we we it's so hard to prove see what what i the guy seemed like okay he came out i i thought for sure he wasn't gonna come out the girl seemed okay i'm like you guys team together with your calm demeanors and look yeah. at each other's phone like let me see your phone let me let me see like not to try to prove that you're like ripping me off but mm-hmm. like is there something getting fucked up like if you can show right. me that you didn't remove the tip then i'm be like okay like we got to go to uber yeah it, it would be interesting to to uh, to see if they could do that and it always opens up the story you know you get the people well they shouldn't allow, be allowed to change their tip 
Um, but what if you know, what if you were the consumer and you had a really bad delivery experience? What's your recourse then? You know, I don't think they should take it away. You should be able to remove. No, you should be able to remove 50 percent of it. 50 percent. Yeah. I think that's fair because like, yeah, yeah, I'm a little pissed, but the guy still did deliver my stuff. Right. Um, and so, you know, you know, it should be, it should, I think 50% or some sort of percentage that's fair. I mean, I think 50 is fair. Like you got yeah. 50% back. The driver got 50% of the original tip and, yeah. you know, you know. Yeah. And the, the lady was extremely calm about yeah. it <laughs> for 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 doing all that shopping and five cases of water and all this stuff and and then got you know yeah i'm not sure i would have done that whole thing for 21 bucks but i don't either know. but definitely not for five dollars oh god no you know what yeah. i mean you know yes it's you know it's it's hard to figure out what the um you know what the perfect answer is if there is one out there you know the 50 percent tip i can i can understand that i you know, i think that would be maybe a fair way to go about it but yeah Bubba Sue said they should not be able to change the tip unless they call customer service explain the issue and then ask them to remove or reduce the tip there should never have been any tip no there shouldn't be that's what I'm saying you can't just rip rip it all off you know what I mean because that's devastating especially like um you know spark uh oh it's a 24 yeah. hours later but See, Spark was a little interesting. I didn't like the 24 hours because I would forget. They weren't documenting. They, they're mm -hmm. better with it now. Now that they, they really show what's unconfirmed. what's But, like, I would have to, like, like keep a ledger and figure out if I got tip baited and or just to figure out how much I'm making for that day. Because as soon as you finish yeah. the order, it only yeah, shows the base pay. Yeah. So, yeah, like, I had to, like... Not had chicken scratch on my phone just to be like, okay, I hit my goal. I can go home. And then hopefully I don't get screwed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was the same way. That was one of the things I did not like about uh, doing spark. Cause yeah, I would, you know, forget to write it down. And then all of a sudden you're like, Oh, what was the tip on that? You know? And next thing you're like, I don't know how much I made today. <laughs> well, especially when you're mul like a lot of times I'm doing admin. spark doordash and rides so i'm yes. like i got i'm adding all these up and and i know there's an app out there gabe and i used to use an app that tracked it automatically but um that put it all in there I, and there may still be ones out there i don't i don't use it but it still wouldn't help yeah. you with the the tip right you know you yeah. still but at least you'd have a better idea because yeah i'll get busy and then i'm like shit i gotta add all these up <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I want to go home. Out, yeah, can I leave yet? Yeah, I'm can I punch out? Math. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm, I've been a long day. I'm doing having to do freaking math. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't want to do math. That's that's no. great. So, um, all right, mattress firm. Oh, okay. So I have not read this. So you're getting a live read on this because I I want to <laughs> know how ridiculous this is. I just saw it on uh, Ride Your Rodeo or. Uh, UberLiftDrivers.com. I'm like, I gotta have this. So mattress firm rolls out two hour delivery with DoorDash. Uh, is collab uh, mattress firm collaborating with DoorDash on demand? Ba, ba, ba. The retailers say it's timing the launch of the new service coincide with the start of school. You get this, this zero delivery fee if you have door door pass or dash pass. Um, okay, I, yeah, I've just got one question about this. Yeah, I know that's what I know what you're gonna ask. So I'm like really reading down. Okay, go. It, it doesn't tell me. How many door dashers are going to be a fit mattress in their car? Yes, that was my first question. But here's the thing. The last four mattresses I bought, I bought them in a box. And they were in a box that I could fit in my bolt. Okay. And then you open them up and then you cut them and then they just fold open so i bet you i just thought of that right now because that's why i pulled it i was like what the fuck who's yeah. gonna be able to deliver that you're gonna roll up there like on a roadie and you got a lawn tractor that you're supposed to take you know what i mean yeah yeah i'm hearing um, my camry trying to deliver this king bed yeah i wish they would have talked about it i i i kind of purposely didn't read it because i wanted to to see it but i wonder if that's it now i mean if you go in their store i'm assuming you're not buying a mattress that 
is in a box, but maybe they're going to uniquely do it. Yeah, it goes on the roof. You know what? You know how many times I've seen mattresses like yeah. laying in the grass because they tried to do that? <laughs> you got you got two people doing this with their arms like trying to hold yeah. it down. I got this side. <laughs> yeah, I got this side. We're good. So, oh, goodness, well, you yeah. know, you know what the whole joke is with all these mattress places that they're they're laundering money like breaking bad cuz like there's like a mattress for as many McDonald's in a city or, 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 or as similar. As many as car washes. Well, car washes make big money that, and I'm sure it's happening by you guys. I'm too. just saying there is many, there is as many mattress places. Oh, as there are car yeah. washes. Yeah. And like, there used to be no mattress places. I know. Here. I know. It's so funny how certain businesses have just exploded over the last, you know, 10 years. Well, and that's the thing. What did I just say to you too? I've bought all my mattresses online. Yeah. Like, I don't even go to the store. Like, I was a, when Casper first came out, I was one of the first, like, no, nah, I'm not saying I was the first, but like the yeah. first year. And I told people, they're like, are you high? I was like, hey, th they say I got 100 days and they'll come pick it up. No questions asked. I was like, what do I got to lose? Yeah. And it was a great mattress. It cost me, I don't know, a thousand bucks, 800 bucks and king size. And we still have it. It's great. That's nice. So, so when my daughter or when my son was ready to upgrade, just we just did it. We bought it on Amazon for two hundred bucks, and it's is it as uncomf is as comfortable as mine? Absolutely not. But he's fourteen, and he can get his own mattress when he's an adult. That's right. So <laughs> two hundred bucks came in a box. Open it up and just flops open. Hey, so, be happy with it. Yep. So yeah, that is uh, that is strange. The all those uh, mattress places, but. I, I got to know. I, I got to see a TikTok that somebody rolls up on that. Someone's got it. I don't know when they're launching it or when. Um, Yeah, there might be some funny video. Well, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. I'm waiting for it. Like, come on, let's go. They have 2,300 stores uh, in the United States and an e-commerce site. So there, there's my thing. I'm wondering if somebody orders it. It gets shipped to a local mattress firm store and it's in a box. And then maybe. Yeah. And that would make more sense. It would make more sense. Like well, who's going to they're out of a hundred drivers. Yeah. 99 are not going to be able to do it. If it's just right. a straight up in a plastic bag on the roof. Bubba exactly. Sue, it goes on the roof. <laughs> Don't even start with me. Good Lord. Uh, All right, Larry. Ooh, surveillance bill. Yeah. Please. So um, two senators are looking to introduce a bill that require the uh, rideshare companies, uh, Uber and Lyft, to notify passengers if their drivers are using dash cams to record them. It says uh, it's a senator from Tennessee and one from Vermont. They want to require the companies to give customers the option of being paired with a new driver if they don't want to ride with a driver who's using a recording device. So Uber and Lyft drivers are increasingly using cameras on their dashboards to document carjackings, assault, robberies, etc. It says the bill must work its way through the U.S. Senate committee before it can be voted on by the full Senate. And the chances of it being passed in the end are unclear at this time. Because Uber and Lyft don't require drivers to register their dash cams. But Uber's website makes it clear that if something goes wrong during a ride, recordings may be used as evidence by the company. So Uber and Lyft both now, uh, you can register your dash cam with them if you want to. It's not required. Uh, they have no way of knowing if you're using a dash cam or not. Right. Uh, I, I have mine, I think, registered with both. So supposedly it pops up and tells the people that I have a dash cam. Actually, when I got my last... Uh, van true camera that i did the review on they sent me a sticker and so now i got a sticker on my passenger side door window that says protected by van true dash cam okay uh, so people know when they get in my car unless they get on the other side that you know i've got a dash cam in my car yeah um i i like this is uh that it was Republican and Democrat. I always, mm -hmm. I always like it when it's like both parties are like, okay, let's try to do that. I don't know sure. how I feel about it. I mean, I don't really care if, if it became a rule, I'd be like, okay, whatever. Like, I yeah, mean, if you don't want to ride with me, I was like, if you don't, if you don't want to ride with me and you want to change the driver, like I'm not going to lose a second of sleep over it. Yeah. I've, I've had two people in, you know, the last seven years that, um, uh, Really, were not happy about me having a dash cam. 
And you know, I offered both of them to get another ride, but they both of them went ahead and rode with me. Yeah. The bottom line for me, and we've talked about it, I don't know, a couple episodes ago, is like we want to have the data too. Like we we want to be able to ac- access it ourselves mm-hmm. because let's be honest with you, if, if Uber's the only one that has it, like they, they're not going to protect you. And if you have to get a lawyer and the lawyer's like, well, where's the video? And they're, I'm like, I don't have it. Uber has it. Like the lawyer's yeah. going to laugh at me and go, I'm not fighting with Uber to try to get this. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And that, that gets in a whole different area about, you know, requirement of having it through them, you know? Uh, yeah. I'll always have my own dash cam. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We talked about it. Cause I think, didn't we say like, would you run two dash cams? And you're like, no, I already have, I don't have enough room yeah, for it. I ain't got no more <laughs> USB ports, dude. <laughs> I'm already wearing my battery. Out. Yeah. They need to make those cameras smaller. Like I'm hoping over time they get smaller. Cause I mean, the Vantry one is not huge, but if you added another one, it definitely yeah. would be a little awkward. The Vantry I have is bigger than my previous Vantry for sure. Oh, is it? Yeah. The screen's at least oh yeah, this, right yeah, now. that's true. The screens are bigger. Yeah. I would say it's probably just a little thicker. I don't know if it's yeah. actually longer or taller, but I guess it would have to be a little taller with the screen. Yeah, it is. My, yeah, definitely the screen is. But yeah, you would think they could. I mean, the, with the little spy cams and stuff. I know. Like, you would think they can make you know something fairly well, small. The problem is, I think with that, the high def camera, the processor that's got to be in there has got to be pretty beefy. You know what sure. I mean? So yeah. And the infrared and all that stuff that you want at night. So yeah. You know, if, as long as I'm, I'm not too upset with the, the size they are now, but yeah, uh, it, I mean, you sure definitely don't want nice. two in there. No, I, I'm not running two. <laughs> you're, you've already, you're like, no, I'm not going to do that's it. That's the line the saying. You're like, no, Larry's like, I'll quit before I do I that. Will. Damn it. I will. That's it, man. I, will. I don't know why cars just don't come with built. I mean, I don't know if the test. Well, it's an, it was an, I, like, I look at the new Camrys. Not that I'm ever going to buy a new Camry, but I look at the new ones when they come out. I don't know. Somehow I'm on their email uh, list. So yeah. I always look at them. It, I mean, it's an option you can choose on a Camry. Oh, really? Yeah. And it was last year. Inside the, inside the car dash cam? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think that's great. I think they should do it. I mean, I know Tesla has the outside ones because, like, I see Tesla dash cam videos all the time. I'm going to have to back up. I I'd have to look and see if it's an in, interior dash cam or not. It may just be that. Well, I know, I know in some of the minivans, yeah. you can spy on your kids in the back, like if you're the yep. driver, but I don't know right. if it actually like records. I'm surprised yeah, manufacturers know. or insurance companies haven't said, Hey fuckers, we need, I mean, that would reduce so many claims. It would make everything easier. Yeah. I think honestly, I think the insurance prices would go down. Yeah. I, and I would think that in the next in 10 years from now, dash cams will be pretty standard on cars. I would think I know in Europe, I don't, I don't know why they, um, it's so prevalent over there, but apparently it is hmm. uh, that almost everyone has a dash cam. Um, well, I know in some of those, not third world, but I know like Russia and maybe in India and stuff like that, they, uh, it's scammers, you know what I mean? So people are, pretending to get hit you know what i mean and that's yeah. why they get cameras because you're like hey really? bitch i got a camera so what are you going to do about yeah. it now but yeah it does i mean it avoids so much and like i said i've never had to really use mine um for anything that happened inside my car it's no. all exterior people running into me <laughs> rear it comes you. in handy it comes yeah. in handy i had a guy rear into me and, and then told his lawyer he didn't he didn't hit me so i sent his lawyer that the video i'm like well, here you go dude <laughs> it's open and shut and then yeah. you know you can sue and the whole nine yards like yeah, yeah. fuck off <laughs> fuck yeah. around and yeah. find out <laughs> yeah the the uh accident that i was involved in coming back from the picnic last year my, my lawyer asked me on our first call he was like can you uh he's like just to just off the you know Hand question here. He's like, "Why do you have Why do you have video of your wreck?" <laughs> He's like, "I've never had a, a, really? a client that that had video of his wreck." <laughs> and I'm like, really? well, "I'm a ride share driver, so I have a dash cam. Shoots, you know, two cameras. One shoots interior, one exterior, so I can see what happened in front of me with the front and then the interior camera. You know, you can see through my rear my rear window pretty good, so yeah. you can see the semi slamming in. You know, you've seen the video. Yeah. Uh, so you know, can see it very clear. So he's like, "Wow, this helps." This helps quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, eat a shut, open and shut. Did you like uh, know somebody that was an attorney, or did you a friend of a friend? Or well, our uh, our son in law in Virginia is an attorney, but he's he um I mean, he obviously didn't practice here. Um, but we asked him for a, a referral, oh, so he refers somebody. The guy is actually 
they were out of Tennessee, but he used to live here in Bowling Green, and so he still has a Kentucky license as well. Okay. So. Yeah, he probably didn't have to leave the office for this one. He probably. No. <laughs> no. That's great. I'm glad you weren't seriously hurt. Hurt. Same. Uh, okay. Next up is it, this is just kind of a little bit, but like this is like the epitome of the worst DoorDash driver. So <laughs> I mean, we've played these before, but this is fucking funny, and I'm playing. They are. It's funny. So, here we go. Oh, I bet that subscriber. Pick up for DoorDash. Pick up for DoorDash. O- okay, what's the name? Hold on. Hold on. It's not loading. Do you know why it's not loading? That's your phone. I don't know. I just, it's a pick up for DoorDash. Okay, what's the name? Melissa. Great, can I see the name on the phone? It's a pick up for Melissa. Great, can I see the name on the phone? For Melissa. That's nice. Name. <laughs> okay, great. Here you go. All right, have a good one. Asshole. I was hope it, yeah. it would it would have been better if she said, "Oh, it's not ready yet." <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would have been good. Yeah, go through all that. Oh, it'll be ready in five minutes. I uh, I try to um, not watch these videos complete. I like to get a like a sense of it just so I can be surprised. And I was hoping at the end she says, "Oh, it's not ready yet," <laughs> but it didn't happen. That w- so that would have been hilarious. Oh, bye. Uh, after I need a cam, if anyone would like to donate their old cam, oh come on, they're not that expensive. You can do it. Tell yeah, them about Vantru if you reach out to them. I did. Do a review. I did. I, I sent them her her uh, information. Oh, uh, has she has she been on the stream before? Yeah, I don't recognize yeah, she's her. On, she's she's been on our te- she's in our Telegram group. She is. Oh, yeah. is that she's North Carolina? Yeah. Who? Oh, I didn't know that. I I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember her coming on YouTube. A uh, Bubba Sue, I think that was a bit. I think yes, that, that was definitely a bit. That that first time that girl at, that worked at the counter, she's like, I don't know. She's asking why her phone's. You could say, yeah, that she's that's that's definitely a bit. Yeah, definitely. I try to sniff 100%. those out as much as I can, but sometimes they're good. Like sometimes yeah, I'm like, this is so funny. Um, stuff like that happens. Yeah, it does. It does. Like, don't be a fucking asshole. Like these guys, think about this. They're retail. They're they're working there. And all of a sudden, gig work comes around, and you got these motherfuckers coming in there asking for food, being rude. Like, be respectful. Like, if you're getting ignored, I understand. You're you're welcome to be. Hey, I'm being ignored, but like, dude, just be patient and and don't yeah. hold your phone in there. I the only time I hold my phone up is like I don't know how to pronounce this name, so I'm going to show it to you just so right. you have reference. I don't say that, but I don't just like hold it in their face. I'm like, I'm sorry. I do say I can't pronounce this name. Here's the name. Right. But other than that, there's no reason to put your phone in their face. Just, just be respectful. Like, I know you're in a hurry, but geez. Yeah. And so I say our motto, you know, don't be a dick. Yeah. Don't, don't be a dick. Yeah. 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 Don't be a dick for sure. Speaking of dick, octopus tablet. No, no segue. <laughs> Go to the link in our description. We have not had a referral in a while. I can't believe everyone listening to this podcast who has a ride share has not freaking done this. But get uh that. Go to the link in the description. You can sign up. It's a tablet for ride share drivers. Uh, oh, I had somebody shit on it in YouTube. What was really? that? So- somebody said something like, "God, I don't know where it was. It was like I think of our." I don't know. I think our review, or maybe it was a social media post. I don't know. Cause I post it once a week or yeah. try to. And they're like, ah, oh, I didn't like it. It was lame or something. My pastors didn't like it. I'm like, well, you're, you must have BO or something. Like, I didn't yeah, say your that. Problems. Yeah, passengers love it. Yeah, they love it. They play games on it. They compete with other people around the country. They can win mm-hmm. Amazon gift cards, so on and so forth. Just, uh, just think of it as entertainment. And I know they are bringing in music soon, whatever that means. I don't know. Um, well, it's got music. Mine's got music now. No, I meant like a more of an interactive thing. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, I think mine's now. It's you can pick from like three different what mood you're in. And it'll play a song from that. You know, they think represents that mood. You can't pick like specific artists. So I'm like I'm that. surprised they haven't done it. I think they haven't because I I think that'll piss a lot of drivers off. And I think I think if they do offer the karaoke, because like when we talked to Linda, like it was great, mm-hmm. right? But like honestly, for me, if I wasn't like with my friends and drinking, if I got in that car and she did that, I, I probably yeah. would say, Hey Linda, I'm, I'm yeah. not in the mood. Like yeah. I, I just, 
you got to know your audience. me with her is so many of her, you know, her videos are during the daytime. That's now, I can crazy. see it at night because she's got the lights going on on her ceiling at night yeah. and things like that. But I was saying like, man, if I was driving during the day, you know, are people really going to want it? But, right. you know, I, I, she, unless she drives in like more of a tourist area because I day drink when I'm on vacation. Yeah. So. Just, you know, her attitude and energy and stuff like that. I think she probably convinces a lot of people who right. normally wouldn't sing to sing. <laughs> so anyways, if you want this tablet, which I don't know why you wouldn't go to the link in the description and get, you get it for free. There's literally yeah. no expense for you, which is amazing. I don't even, I can't believe they don't even ask for a deposit, but, uh, yeah. they do a great job and, uh, you should sign up and, uh, yeah, it's get just, us paid. you know, make money, not do anything. You know, passive income. Gal says there is karaoke in there. I, no, there's not. You don't know. He's gonna kick, he's gonna kick me in the teeth. He's probably gonna come to the picnic and kick me in the teeth for saying that. I need to go out and look at mine. He was giving me shit on Facebook today. I was like commenting on Amazon flex posts, and he's like, "You don't even fucking work." You said some shit like that. I'm like, <laughs> I'm gonna kick you in the teeth. Um, uh, yeah, I do need to go look at mine though. It, uh, I haven't. Uh, a lot of times I'll try to, you know, just sit and. Uh, sit in the back of my car um, either at the end of a shift or before I go out and let it go, let it go through a couple of cycles just to see what's new on the tablet. I haven't done that in a few weeks. Well, so I need that and see what's. Yeah. Pretty. Well, I was going to say next time you go out, have wifey drive and you just sit in the front seat and hold the tablet. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that way you don't have to sit in the back and look like a weirdo. <laughs> I always, I always hated turning mine on. Like I would go start driving and then yeah. they, someone would see, I mean, I don't know why, but I felt awkward, like getting out of my front seat walk and then see, they see me walk. And again, my windows are tinted dark, dark, dark. And I get in the back seat and shut the door. They're yeah. like, what the fuck's <laughs> going on here? So, somebody needs to call the authorities. Yeah, exactly. You need a well check. So the guy in the back of his car with a thirsty goose doing strange things oh yeah yeah if you see me go in the back with a thirsty goose uh yeah you better call the cops <laughs> all right let's see we got 44 minutes all right larry let's talk about uber's new shop in ohio yeah which is so cool. uh i was talking about here at ohio state uh, university um you can go to a specially set up bodega that offers very popular brands such as Starbucks, Taco Bell, Domino's, Wendy's, and others. So students are also going to have the opportunity to win exclusive deals as well as get free goodie bags of their favorite products. And this it's called the one shop and it's designed for students uh, by Uber is promoting their Uber one for students program. It's their new student membership program. Eligible students can access benefits such as savings on Uber and Uber eats. And they're going to have it set up for two days, at, like I said, on uh, Ohio State University campus, August 28th and 29th. Oh, that would be cool. I wish they would do that at Western because I would go by there. Oh, yeah. So it's just a little pop-up shop. Yeah, it's a little pop-up. Uh, it's called the One Shop. Okay. Um, it doesn't say if they're doing it anywhere else. Uh, I don't know why they just do it in one university. That's Maybe they're just testing it out. And I don't know why you test it out in Ohio. I know, although Ohio State is a huge university. I mean, it's not. Yeah, well, uh, probably because this article is out of a Columbus Ohio uh, newspaper. So it, they're probably doing it other places. But yeah, if they did it at uh, WKU here in Bowling Green, I would go eat their food because they rip us off so much. I would steal all their food. Yeah, you'd, you'd be like <laughs> having a bag and throwing all the promos and <laughs> right. stuff like that. <laughs> my my DoorDash cold bag. So what is their, there. what are they pushing? It's Uber Uber One is that it's called Uber One? Yeah, we 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 talked about it. Uh, uh, it's been a while back. I'm sure but we it's did. A new membership where for students, um, just a lower cost, I think, membership than other. You know, you can't. You know how they always discount stuff for college. Kids. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's uh, it's just a membership that gives them a discount on rides and Uber Eats. Well, I'll be careful with that stuff because I heard it's very hard to cancel that Uber subscription. I hear people talking about it in the Reddit group. Really? Yeah, oh, it's not man. like. It's not like easy. I always love companies where I can cancel or um, mm -hmm. just make things easier for my life. Like like my dogs with Chewy, like I set it up on a schedule like auto ship, but like, hey, I'm running low. I hit yeah. ship now and I'll have it tomorrow. Like just just yeah. companies that really look at the customer and like make the customer priority is just yeah. it's top notch and, for me. And there, anybody, any company that can remove friction Oh, your life i'll be loyal for a life chewy yes. is a little bit more expensive but it gets delivered my god they sent me flowers when my last dog passed 
Yeah. Well, you I know mean, what I mean? Like I'm, I'm a customer for fucking life. Yep. There you so, go. Um, I got to go back to our previous comment. Gary said, if passengers started seeing, I'll remove my tablet. What I was going to say about the karaoke is that they, if they do offer it, the driver should have the option to turn that off. Yeah. Cause if you're not into it, like I don't like, no, I, I mean, I, and I might turn it off. I mean, as much as we love Linda, <laughs> I might turn it off. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Miguel, huh? Oh, Miguel, gosh. do you, do you, speaking of that, do you remember the company who used to promote oil Uber? And it was based, it, that's what was the name of it, right? Or was it Luber? Luber. Was maybe? it Luber? I don't know. It was basically mobile oil change things, but they like, yeah. no, they didn't use Uber in it because that, no, maybe they did. I'll have to look. I can't remember, but. Oh, you used to allow Carrie to enjoy. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. But like, like Larry said, Linda. Uh, they're out of business, Larry, if, if they yeah. even have any web presence, but, um, uh, like Larry said that Linda, she was able to do it during the day. But again, I think maybe being a tourist area, you know, everyone loves day drinking, but anyways, but yeah, uh, what were we just talking about? I just died. Oh, cancellation. We got off on a tangent yeah, there. Didn't we, we did. <laughs> Maybe yeah, just a little bit. Uh, all right, real quick. Uh, this is about. Um, I don't have a video of this. Be oh, I know. I went to go. Jesus, what happened to my computer? Sorry. I went to go play the video, and it was six minutes. I said no, thank you. Like 10, 10 seconds, and she she even said, "I'm gonna make get right to the point." I was like, "No, you don't." I didn't not even six listen minutes. You didn't. No way. I'm not watching that. So this is kind of interest interesting story. So. Uh, she said yesterday, I almost died jumping out of a moving lift because the driver is trying to kidnap me. She claims the video has reached 4.5 million views. Uh, she said she was catching a 30 minute ride from ride from Yale's university campus in New Haven, Connecticut to a workplace at the Clinton outlets and was ecstatic when she saw she was assigned a female driver. When the driver pulled up, she said there were no red flags. The picture license plate and car model matched the app's description. However, 10 minutes before the exit towards Dre's workplace, she said that the Lyft driver got a phone, got on the phone with a man and started speaking in a foreign language. At first, I didn't think anything of it, she says, but then she said something in English, dark skin, red sweater. Oh, it's, I said Dre, it's Drea. Drea says she immediately recognized the driver was giving the description to the man on the phone. She says the woman hung up at the phone, ended the ride, got back on the highway just as she was about to exit. I asked her, what are you doing? She says, she told me to shut up. She didn't have to tell me nothing else. Drea says she jumped from the moving lift, fearing that she was going to be sex traffic. It hurt so bad she thought she was going to die. I felt like I was in a movie. I keep replaying it, so on and so forth. And she called the cops. So, oh, I mean, I don't know. Like, if that legitimate is exactly what happened, like, that sounds fucked up. Like, um, if you talk to somebody on the phone that describe, and then you describe, what you're wearing that's yeah i mean I, i'm proud of that gal for like being aware of my most of the kids and you know you work in a college town i tell my daughter when you're out in public mm -hmm. like maybe not you know not by at school or anything but phone down eyes up phone mm -hmm. down eyes up because yep. do not bury yourself in your phone because you're gonna miss so many things yes. um and so i'm glad that that girl was smart enough to do that I don't see any follow up from it, but that's some scary shit. It is, yeah. And I mean, the video looked like, I mean, she did have some injuries. To oh, her yeah. Face. She got fucked up. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's a shame that we're always skeptical or, you know, we're always trying to read in things. Is it, does this really happen? You know, things like that. I don't know. Said she had over $16,000 in medical bills. Uh, which she opened a GoFundMe, me, but then she took it down. Yeah. The GoFundMe is kind of weird, right? Just get an yeah. attorney. Yeah. Just go after Uber, the GoFundMe that makes it a little weird. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Go after Lyft. They've got the money. Yeah. Lyft. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I, I always get weird about, about the GoFundMe. It's like, so do you remember that bus driver that went viral? That's just, she's, she's going to kick her, I actually bought a t-shirt for her to get money, but she goes, she got fired, but she was so sick of the kids. Like she had hit her limit and she's like, I'm going to kick, I'm going to put this boot so far out your ass. is going to dangle out your nose. Like that literally was <laughs> what the t-shirt said. That woman got like almost a half a million dollars on GoFundMe. And I'm like, I'm fine with that. She lost her job. Those kids are assholes. 
Like, I'm fine with that. But for this, you have an opportunity to sue Lyft and be like, hey, this this happened, you know. Yeah, but, I mean, if you sue Lyft, I mean, how how is that – is it their responsibility? Well, how, I think you – know, How I are think they liable? What, what kind of liability do they have? Well, in the problem situation? is then, then they need to shut the platform down. They need some responsibility. I understand that. They didn't do anything wrong. I get that. But that's the risk you take when you have a business like that. It's called liability insurance. You're going to have you're going to get sued. It's going to yeah. happen. And there's going to be a judge and an attorney that are going to take that case. And they're going to they they don't like you. They don't like how you take advantage of people. And they're going to rail you to the ground. And, and yeah. nine times out of ten, this shit probably settles out of court anyways. Mm-hmm. But my point is, you know, where do we draw the line that these companies are liable? Yes, I understand right. they had nothing to do with it, but you own the brand, you own the business, you brought this guy on or this gal, and this is what she did. Yeah. I think you're liable. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that, that she needs to, su- she should get millions of dollars, but she should at least have her medical bills and maybe a little bit of pain and suffering yeah. taken care of. But what do you, I mean, what do you, I mean, yeah, it's let me give you an example. You're going to Kroger. Old Johnny that bags something decides to whip his dick out in there, right? Yeah. And expose himself mm-hmm. to a lady and she's offended and and it, you know, she has PTSD from it. Isn't Kroger responsible for that? Yeah, but he's a Kroger employee. But we're driving for Lyft. Well, we're not I employees. Mean, like here we're getting yeah. we're getting some- Yeah. We're getting some gray areas here. Yeah, you get into the weeds because, like, quick. these companies can't. They that's what they'll claim, right? Well, he, where he's yeah. an independent contractor, that's where mm-hmm. I fucking get a little pissed about it. It's like, yeah. okay, we are, but like, so it means we can do whatever we want, and and yeah. like, I'll start a business like that. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'll start something like an Uber business with strippers or nude topless women, or I, I don't know something, something that somebody would want to sue for and that I don't have to take responsibility for, but I still get paid. Yeah. No, I understand. It's, there are a lot of, uh, gray areas in the, in the whole relationship. I just went on this, that soul rant I, I had was so thirsty. <laughs> I, was like, yeah. I was like, stop talking, Jason. You got cotton mouth. Take a drink. <laughs> Miguel says pay her out of some of that insurance month they charge. Yeah, no shit. Really? Oh, stupid assholes. Oh, goodness. Oh, let's see. What do we got? We got let's do one more. Which I, I like the Kenyan story. Let's do that okay. one. The other one's like whatever. It was kind of a throwaway story. Okay, so um these drivers over in Kenya, um they say that in eight years of working as uh, taxi drivers, they've never seen business this bad. So there's a really big price war going on between Uber, uh, a company called uh, Bolt out of Estonia, and then some local startups called Little and Ferris. It says all this competition has driven the fares really low. And so, of course, that means the driver's pay is going really low. Yeah. So it says a lot of the, a lot of the, they interviewed, um, some drivers there and one of them said, most of us have these cars on a loan and the cost of living has gone way up. I try to convince customers to agree to a higher rate. If they can't pay, we cancel and let them find another driver. Yeah. Said about half the passengers who we get in touch with eventually agree to pay more than the price that comes up on their app. Um, said, but Uber says such arrangements break its guidelines and told its drivers to get back in line, setting up a clash between the, automated world of the international ride hailing company and the messier realities of one of its biggest developing markets. The East African nation of 50 million people has been rocked by deadly protests against tax hikes, uh, high prices of basic commodities and elevated interest rates. And so like I said, these people are having a hard, you know, it's, it's rough there. They're having yeah. higher prices. They're getting taxed to death. And so, Drivers have gone on strike in Kenya twice this year and then once last year over the low fees that they're getting paid. Uber's head of East Africa says that it was reviewing reports of customers being overcharged. We encourage all riders to report such instances. Um, like the Uber drivers are like asking for more money? Yes. The Uber uh, drivers are what they do. Uh, they call when they get a ride. They call the the passengers and they're saying it's going to cost you this much. Oh, yeah. Skirting the system. 
yeah, they're saying that this is, you know, I'm not going to come get you. This, you know, this is how much it's going to actually cost you to go. So they're, they're charging, you know, over and above, uh, you know, one of the persons said here said that, you know, they basically charge like 1.5 times what the normal rate would be. Which isn't um, hair isn't horrible, actually. No, no. <laughs> Says so we we asked the client where they're going, how much they're getting charged on the app. Uh, then we propose a rate based on our chart, which can be done quickly by multiplying one point five. If they agree, we take the ride. If not, we either negotiate a little bit or we decline because the current rates are not sustainable with the higher cost of fuel and spare parts. Um, hmm. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's the customer that pays uh, and money and time spent haggling. These negotiations end up taking so much time that ends up beating the logic of trying to save time by taking a cab or right. a ride share. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. I mean, I I wouldn't mind doing some sort of negotiating if the app would would let you do it. Like we talked about, like you know, well, I will I'll do it for fifteen or how about twelve? You, but you it, can counter offer. But it has to be quick and it has to be on the app. I'm not talking to somebody on the fucking phone like negotiating right. the stuff. So. It, and it may be indifferent with Kenya with the car insurance and stuff like that. But like, man, if you do that here, you are rolling the dice. Uh, you know, Gary says, if every driver is doing this, not much Uber can really do. They need drivers. Well, that's true. Yeah, yeah. If they all, you know, it's just like a you band together, you unionize together and do that. Yeah. Then what are they going to do? Yeah. But I mean, yeah, they are taking a chance, but I mean, it's yeah. not, I mean, we've, we all know that, you know, we've gotten long rides and we've, uh, you know, Definitely. people will, people will ask, say, Hey, you know, I'd love to do this ride, but you know, I'm dead heading back. I'm going to need an extra hundred dollars or, you know, gas money or something. There was a, a conversation in my local Facebook where recently there's a guy that just is outraged and he posts all these shitty long rides. So like, I get it. He posts a lot of them. It's like, we all understand that. But yeah. I said the sad truth, I commented in there on one time. Normally I just lurk, but I was like, the sad truth is, bud, or his name's Connor. I didn't say bud is that people are still fucking taking them. If Uber is still offering them, you know, for bottom feeding money, people must still be taking them. Mm -hmm. Cause like everyone I talk to aren't going to take them. Yeah. Well, we know, I mean, we see it with uh, Uber and with the delivery apps. We know there's a constant influx of these new, of new people, Yeah, you know, for whatever reason, you know, the economy, job market, whatever, there's always this big influx of new people coming into the gig economy and they don't know, you know, some of them don't know how not to take these orders. Well, I mean, you so, got to know just like, just statistically, you know, what a gallon of gas costs, like you, you know, yeah. you get gas. So you're, you're looking at the miles and you're like, I mean, yeah, I mean, and, and that people figure that out pretty quick, but when you first start, you yeah. know, some people are like, oh man, they don't know about acceptance trade. Is this going to kick me off? Yeah. That, I, see that you, know, you go, that is the most, that's, I think it's that. Yes, they do. You, you, you don't know any of this when you first start, you, you know, you have to get it, you have to figure it out unless you've got somebody that's, you know, kind of mentoring you or, or you, you know, you've been in, uh, known somebody who, who does gig work and they've told you about it. You have to kind of figure it out on your own and yeah. you worry about that. So, Oh man, if I don't, you know, if I decline these many rides in a row, they're going to kick me off the app or, yeah. you know, if you're trying to make your rent, so you're not getting kicked down the street, you worry about that. You're not, well, well, yeah, okay, that, that's this. different. But Gary said just what we said, you know, yeah. people have FOMO though. This is why people taking bad trips. They're afraid if their AR tanks, they won't get offers. But if every driver has a low AR, they have to send the offers. Well, that's the yeah. thing too. I, I, I honestly, I, even me, as much as I've been a gig worker, I do think when I decline a lot of rides, I do think, are, are they, are they dicking me around? They're shafting me. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, <laughs> they're going to punish but me, you, but you don't know, you don't know. You can't, you can't figure it out. Well, they do kick you off the app, but you just sign back on. And if you're using Gary's yeah. apps, it just fucking signs you back on for you. You don't even have to tap yeah. anything. So it's like, it's like it's yeah. not a big deal to me if I if it signs me back in and I don't have to do anything. It's like whatever. I'm not taking this shit. You know what I mean? I know Lyft will. Uh, Lyft will kick you off for like like 20 minutes. Yeah. But anyways, I oh Gary gets silent pause all the time. Yeah. No kidding. No kidding. But well, that was a good show. Larry's tired. He's he's fought off three yawns the last. Yes, we used to do that. You don't normally do that, but uh, yeah, we it's both been a long week, man. First week of class. Yeah, 
I've, I've had to go to Glasgow, which is like 50 minutes away a couple of days. So I've had to get up super early. Oh, yeah. Uh, I hear you. I'm ba- you know, I told Megan, she she kind of was like, hey, like, so last week before school, I did early Amazon. Well, not Miguel early, but I got up yeah. at 530 every day. And I was like, thank God that I did, because then I didn't get sticker shocked when I woke up on Monday to start driving bus. But yeah. I'm still tired. Like, I'm still yeah. like going to bed at nine o'clock at night like i last night i told larry i was in bed at 8 45 i told my family yeah. good night i'm going to bed at 8 4 before the kids <laughs> yeah so that'd be a thing if i if i was going to bed but we're, we're we haven't been getting to bed till like 11. So. what are you doing you know how to take care of you tell the wifey hey it's time for bed yeah well she's got to get her stuff done well then you, <laughs> you let her you let her do it and you go sleepy well, I've been I've had to do schoolwork, man. Oh. I'm taking classes too. Oh my gosh. Anyway. College kid again. All right, guys. As <laughs> always, don't put up with anyone's bullshit. And we'll see you on the road. All right. Have a great night. Good night, everybody. This podcast is produced and edited by Hey Guys Media Group. Wanna start a podcast? Check out Hey Guys Media Group.com. Mm-hmm.